right, fight fans, this bout is scheduled for four rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He is wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 213 pounds. With a record of three victories, three defeats, two wins, coming by way of knockout. From Macon, Georgia, Tobias, hit like a pin, rise! And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, he is wearing the black trunks. He weighed in at 231 pounds. Undefeated as a mixed martial artist, tonight he makes his boxing debut. Originally from Houston, Texas, now from Anderson, South Carolina, Justin, the sure bat, Ladan. Referee Vincent Aku with final instruction. We're here with Chris Jordan, local cruiserweight fighter again. Georgia Boxing Championships. We're here for our fifth bout of the evening in the heavyweight division, Justin Ledet versus Tobias Rice. Ledet, an MMA crossover like we've seen a couple of times tonight, Chris. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, they both look uh, like they came in uh, in pretty good shape. And for some heavyweights, they both look like they have really fast speed with the hands. They both look very athletic. I agree with you, Chris. Ledet has a nice speedy jab. I'm, I'm a little surprised. I wasn't expecting that. Tobias looks like he's setting up a nice left hook here. If he counters it left. Ledet's corner. Nick Nakato and Dino both training. Justin Ledet. They both mentioned that he's a good athlete. They feel very confident in their fighter. Tobias looks like he's ready to throw some haymakers, though, Chris. I think he, he, yeah, he, he's waiting on them. Uh, but Ledet's doing what he's supposed to, kind of uh, messing up his tempo by uh, throwing that jab out there. Keeping a jab in the face, just That's like right. that. Keeping a jab in the face against the, the bigger Tobias Rice. One, one, three two. and three, making Georgia fighter. We've seen some good fighters come out of the middle Georgia area, Chris. Yes, we have. Ledet can just keep that jab on Tobias. It should be an easy fight for him. Well, that with a nice right hand. Was Tobias hurt or was that a, a balance issue? Did he look hurt? Nice. <laughs> Tobias Rice. Both in black trunks. I'll tell you what, it's kind of hard to fight backing up if you're not countering. And uh, looks like uh, Ledette is just pecking him with the jab, pecking him with the jab. Has his hands up. He's blocking the overhand right. He's got a great defense. He, yeah. he really does. Now, Tobias throws haymakers. If one of those land, it'll hurt. Yeah, um, if he would straighten them up. I'd like to see him straighten them up just a little bit. They're looping. The overhand right is um, it's nice by Tobias if it lands. Tell you what, Mr. Ledet for making his debut, it seems really calm. He's collected, he got his composure. He's blocking that uh, loopy right hand. And like you said, Preston, if uh, Tobias Rice could just throw it straight, I think he'd have a better shot. Nice tactical fights by two larger heavyweights, both athletic, both move well. They like to fight in the center of the ring. We haven't seen a lot of wrestling here. A little bit of a different tempo than we've seen in the earlier fights. More of a chess match, Chris. Uh, I agree. Crowd settling in. We come to the closing seconds of the first round at the Georgia Boxing Championship Series. Sports fan property, Shea Bailey promotion, and Greg Barkoff. Good first round. That's a, that's a tough round to score. That was it, a it, tough it, round to score. Uh, as far as power shots, I'd have to give it to Tobias. Early only threw some, some heavy, heavy blows. Uh, however, as far as volume of punches, keeping the jab on him and dictating the tempo, might, that round might have to go to Ledet. Yeah, I, I think it was, like you said, a very close round. They both had uh, their moments. Um, uh, they both uh, threw some body shots. Uh, Ledet threw some great jabs. Uh, and I think they're going to step it up a, a notch here in the second round. Well, look forward to see some more action here in Atlanta. Tecate Beer, 680 to fan. Xfinity, CarSmart, Mobile Graphics, and Best Auto Insurance Agency. Some of our supporters and sponsors this evening, along with a packed out crowd and a wonderful venue. 
here at the Buckhead Theater this Friday night in August. We're having a good evening, Chris. What a great venue. I'll tell you what, the best for fighting here in Atlanta. I love it. It is an intimate, intimate arena, a small ring. You generally see a lot of knockouts, and that's what we've seen tonight. Absolutely. And uh, there Lidette we go. comes out a little more active with the jab. Uh, it seems like they're both smiling at each other every now and then. If Ledeck keeps his hands up and gets off first, uses the center of the ring, he looks really good out there. Yeah, he does. A lot of inexperienced fighters, when they got caught with a nice shot like Ledette just did, will come out. Nice uppercut by Tobias. Ledette smiles. <laughs> it's just to ag him on, but that can either mean you're hurt or it just agitated you. Well, that's corner admonishing their fighter to throw more combinations. It's hard for another guy to throw back when you're constantly putting punches on him, putting leather on him. I see Tobias going to the body, trying to pull Mr. Ledette's hands down. Ledette caught him in a nice, nice series of punches, a barrage to the head. None were overly powerful, but they're all effective. An exchange goes back. Tobias fires back. Says, no way, not here, not tonight. Fireworks here in Atlanta, Georgia, baby. Buckhead, boxing at its best. Fireworks here in Atlanta, Georgia, baby. Buckhead. Matchmakers, they know what type fighters are going to present a wonderful challenge to each other and present an exciting, exciting fight. And it, it's, it's great that he can secure these kind of fighters on a, on a continual basis. And I think that's what Atlanta needs for boxing. I, I would have to agree. And I'm really uh, looking forward to seeing Mr. John Trigg fight uh, in the sixth rounder on the seventh bout. Sure. Uh, some of these guys that they've uh, put on the card tonight are just absolute warriors. We've got guys from all over the southeast, even northeast here. Um, it's been exciting. We've had all weight classes. It's a good heavyweight tactical match. Oh, Ledette throws three bombs. Overhand right and bangs his opponent to the body. One, two, three punch combinations. Ledette seems like he's feeling more comfortable in the boxing ring. Yeah, he, he, he seems to have gotten into his zone. He's just coming forward, throwing shots, backing uh, Tobias up a little bit. He seems as though he's has command of the ring and is gonna be the general in that arena. Tobias Wright, three and three, versus the debut, Ledette. Chris, as we come to the closing moments of the second round, I'm gonna have to give that round to Ledette again. I, I would have to agree with you. Um, he was a uh, little more commanding in his, uh, in his presence. He came forward and threw a lot of great combinations, Preston. This is a skilled, skilled fighter here uh, uh, for a debut. I'd like to see how he develops. He's a very confident young man. I am very surprised and pleased. I'll tell you, Chris, I've seen fighters cross over from MMA and other martial arts to boxing, and uh, one common thing that I see is that oftentimes they don't sit down and put complete leverage behind every punch. They're, they've been so used to being countered with a kick or, or getting ready for a takedown that they're not taught to sit down with leverage because if you lock your legs in MMA, you can be foot swept, evidently. But you see a lot of the, the, the karate and MMA crossovers throw more arm punches sometimes. Yes, uh, you know, and, and that's a great... Uh that's a great call that you made there. I, and it's something that I, I didn't even realize myself until you said that. Um, I guess that's what you're 13 and 0. And, yeah. and you, you pick those things up yeah. a lot quicker well, than some of us. I just see Ledette as a very athletic guy, and he's throwing a lot of winging punches, but not ever sitting down, pivoting off the front foot. You're right. No, he's I'm, on his heels, not his toes. Yes, and, he, and he, he does have his knees locked out. He has his knees, Yes, and he's held that wide stance, hands high, but the straight slaps, a lot of arm punches. If he put complete leverage yeah. behind that much, and he's landing at, a, at a, enough consistency, that should do some damage. Absolutely. But a lot of slaps. No, no, I agree. Oh. See the difference in the... Yeah, the, uh, yeah. I split. do. The next corner. 
screaming, pleading with their fighter to keep the pressure on. It's getting hot here. Tobias is in the kitchen. He's about to get burned, folks. He's getting too close, close to the fire. Odette's gonna burn him. Odette's moving in. He's in the kitchen now, cooking eggs, grits, and some bacon, Chris. Yes. Kicking. He's gas. Tobias is running out of gas. He's in the middle of the desert, and there's not a station in sight, Chris. He's tired. Yes, he is. Yeah, I think he's a little gassed out. Mr. Ledette seems like he's just, uh, you know, unfazed right now. Justin Ledette, pro debut, looks like an experienced prize fighter. Tobias Rice, he's tired. I think uh, Mr. Ledette can, can Ledette taste the blood. Ledette is on him. Combination. Tobias Wright yields. He's too tired. A little early stoppage, I think, Chris. Yeah, I think. Wow. <laughs> Give him a... I don't think He has was, not stopped uh... the fight. Has he stopped the fight? I, I, it's a little confusing what's going on right now. That was very confusing. First knockdown. First time he's been in trouble, serious. He goes down to a knee to take a rest. Just take a rest. Is, is it over? Great fight, great fight. Early stoppage. Uh, I have some problems with that stoppage. Yeah, I think uh, Mr. Tobias should have given, uh, should have been given the benefit of the doubt, been able to continue. Well, I didn't see him get caught, caught with a punch. It was just a combination. He just took a knee. He was a little tired. Yeah. The round was coming to a close. He was going to take a breath to the next round and, and try to let it all hang out for the fourth round. I think he should have been. Uh, I should. I think he should have been able to continue this fight. Chris, he we've seen so it in the heavyweight division. One shot can change the fight. Even a dangerous, so tired, wounded animal is dangerous. Yeah, and, and to the credit of the, of the official, you know, we're not really in there, so sure. maybe he saw something in the fighter's eyes that we, uh, as commentators, couldn't really see. Um, but, you know, in Georgia, you, you they don't have an uh, eight count. So, you know, we're sure. told at the fighters meeting, if you feel like you're in trouble, take a knee. Uh, and so that's what we're instructed to do. So, you know, that's I'd it. hate to see a fighter take the advice of, uh, of, the, of the official in the fighters meeting and do what uh, they're told to do and then have the fight stop. Be penalized for that. Yes. I, I think you make an excellent point, Chris. It might be something we need to address here in Georgia. If that's um, well, could be a tactic of a fighter. A guy could be winning three rounds, get a little tired, get caught with a body shot, take a knee to recover, come back and win the fight. But if it's stopped, then it takes away. It could be strategic. At yeah. one minute it, and it, 42 it seconds could. of round And I wouldn't mind if I had a fighter in trouble. He won three out of four rounds, and I know that he can he can lose a round, Justin take a knee, recover, and come back, and you won. I think the referee saw a... Uh, Tobias slowly being picked apart, decimated, just getting tired. And uh, he probably just felt like he was All very right, vulnerable to being hurt. Yeah, I, I think so. Standing with the, uh, the Houston Texan, and, Texan uh, native and now living in Anderson, North, South Carolina, Kimberly Sargent with Justin Ledette. Let's give it up, guys. Great job. You don't even look tired making this huge pro boxing debut after being 3-0 and in MMA. How does it feel? Uh, I just want to go see my mom at home. That's about it. <laughs> Mom's back in South Carolina? Huh? Mom's back in South Carolina? Nah, she's back in Houston. Aw. Well, congratulations. Obviously, you in there, it's not used to seeing MMA guys with the proper footing. You know, you didn't go in there standing square like I'm used to seeing boxers. Do you come from a boxing background? Um, not really, but I guess I learned fast, so... Kind of, kind of worked out for me there, I guess. Well, for the fans you gained out here, before I let you go, MMA or boxing, are you here to stay? Uh, try a little of both, see where I'm better at, and just keep fighting until I get old. Best of luck. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Ledet.